Yeah. Madam Speaker, mature states are often faced with tough decisions. How do you deal with a troublesome neighbour? We're going to start off this debate by openly saying we don't think there's an ideal solution to the North Korean policy, a North Korean problem in terms of South, Korean, South Korea's view. We do not think that unification is a real hope for the future. The realistic thing that we're talking about here is low-hanging fruit. And the low-hanging fruit, we say, is the security of the civilian population of South Korea. Some background. In 2008, after coming to power, Lee Myung-bok, Lee Myung-bok, the current president of Korea, reversed the policy that was put in place in 1998 by Kim Dae-jung and carried forward by his successor, Roh Moo-yoon, called the Sunshine Policy. The basic position that he took moving away from that was an outright rejection of North Korea to the point of pretending it does not exist Madam Speaker, because they re until seeing until seeing concessions, the specific concessions that President Lee actually wanted was firstly a halt of the nuclear weapon program that North Korea was endeavor uh, embarking upon and has had on and off, and secondly a, commi a commitment to attend the six party talks. Now, as much as that policy has been placed the last three years, we have seen North Korea not budging on either thing. We say it's time for a change. And our change is a return to the sunshine policy. What is the sunshine policy? It is a unilateral diplomatic in policy of diplomatic engagement with North Korea on multiple levels. We say firstly, it, it, and these are specific aspects we want to see happen. Firstly, the reopening of border liaison officers to allow contact between two borders and also a control flow of information, material and people across the two borders. The hundred families that got to meet each other in 2003, it was a hugely emotional experience for both parties. It was viewed positively in South Korea. Secondly, we would like to see continued joint economic development. There was actually, before President Lee came to power, a joint economic development region called the Kaesong Industrial Complex, where South Korean companies employed 50,000 North Korean workers, primarily in the textile industry. We also saw the giant joint development of the Kumbang Mountains, where tourism was jointly developed there. Yeah, yeah. Thirdly, we would, see, we would like to see a limited restoration of diplomatic relations in the form of high-level summits between the two leaders, like we saw in 2000 where Kim Dae-jung met his Kim other Kim, Kim Jong-il in South Korea and North Korea and surprisingly the world was you know, surprised at how well that went so much so that Kim Dae-jung Dae won the Nobel Peace Prize that yeah, very yeah. same year. Then we also say a, a, a delivery of humanitarian aid to relieve the suffering that is on the ground of some of the Koreans who many, not Koreans, who many South, South Koreans consider their kin. Now, given, so the, keep in mind, all these things are unrelated to security. In terms of compromising security values, that's in terms of delivering weapons, continuing intelligence, we're not going to compromise that and we will continue our vigilance on South Korea. But we believe in today's debate, what is important is given the changing times in South Korea, it is important we show a face of friendship to this nation to, to use this opportunity to build greater peace and security. I'm going to talk about it on two levels. Firstly, how the current policy of non-engagement is an utter failure. On the second level, I'm going to talk about how this is an opportunity in the context of North Korea we cannot afford to miss. My second speaker, NC, who's also one of the last line of defenses, because he's a paratrooper, or rather the first line of offense uh, for South Korea, will talk about the context of South Korea and how the time is right there. I'll take you now. You see, to give North Korea a face of friendship, but in light of recent attacks to South Korea, wouldn't you be giving them extra mileage to continue this trend of offensiveness? Lovely, ma'am, because that goes nicely into my first point, how the current policy of non-engagement is a failure. You see, realistically, right, the way we're going to deal with North Korea is either worse or less worse. We're never going to get an ideal situation. Honestly, the two countries are still actually officially at a state of war. The 1950 war, that's, you know, 21st June, 25th June 1950, they, they are still fighting. They're technically at a state of war. So realistically, it isn't about what will change North Korea, but what contains them better. We say our policy is empirically better. Because fundamentally, the most dangerous behavior we've seen from North Korea 
to, and in, in this case we define it as harms to civilians, has happened under the, this current policy of rejection, this current policy of non-engagement. We refer you to the Yang Pyong attacks that happened, uh, uh, that happened earlier this year, where the, the attacks were on an island and also on a civilian area. They shelled a town, Mr. Speaker, injuring hundreds and killing two civilians. This is unprecedented since the 1970s, Madam Speaker. Secondly, we'll talk about the attack on Shonan, the, mo the, the worst military attack that North Korea has launched in the last two decades. We say both of these, we believe, is a direct result of the fact that North Korea feels its southern neighbor is arrogantly ignoring it. And in a position to save face, they try to get attention this way. Contrast this with the sunshine policy, where during that time, the worst we saw was sable rattling from this nation. We acknowledge they did try to develop a nuclear program. We'll talk about that in a bit. But more importantly, we see this sort of sable rattling with China and Taiwan in terms of the, 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 the passing of an anti-secession law in China, the People's Republic of China. We say fundamentally, this sort of diplomatic tit for tit, tit for tat rather, happens all the time. We say you draw the line when civilian harm happens. And and that has happened under the status quo. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we'd like to talk about how we say fundamentally the nuclear issue is less of one because South Korea is probably never going to be attacked with nuclear weapons. North Korea forces mutual assured destruction in that case. What we should be more worried about is continuing conventional attacks. The nuclear weapon question is largely a concern more for the West than it is for South Korea. Finally, talking about the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, because we say there's a change in leadership. Kim Jong-un is coming to power. Yeah. Raul Castro's emergence to power and Obama's lessening of sanctions resulted in direct benefit on the ground of Raul Castro re uh, reducing some of the more authoritarian aspects of his regime. More so, though, we saw better engagement with the United States. We secondly say there are uprisings on the ground in North Korea. We have an opportunity now to shape how Korea emerges from this. If we continue the current policy, Policy, the military establishment that will most likely come to power if they find Kim Jong-un un as weak will continue to remember South Korea as an enemy. What does our policy do? It enjoys greater visibility for one because you actually can be in that country. You actually have faces, not names. It also allows greater commonality. Both countries are invested in each other, but especially if South Korea has economic interest in North Korea, North Korea finds it in its interest to keep those things going. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, we say the times are a changing. The way it's worked so far has been more detrimental to the very people governments are supposed to protect. We feel it's time to do the, to bring back the sunshine policy we're proud to propose. <laughs> Madam Chair, a nation as belligerent as North Korea should be treated with punitive measures, not with positive measures, and be rewarded for its belligerent, belligerency, Madam Chair. What we're, going to believe, what we're going to talk about in this debate is first we're going to talk about status quo and how status quo can ensure security of South Koreans, and we're going to talk about what are the harms of the Sunshine Policy by giving unconditional unilateral aid to the North Koreans whom there has been a, you know, there's been a vast history of distrust between the South and the North. Madam Chair, under status quo, sanctions has been put in place towards North Korea. We consider the fact that the Yongbyon Islands were attacked when sanctions were in place, but the reasons why they were, uh, why Yongbyon Island was attacked, wasn't because there was a perceived sense of arrogance which the North Korean sense uh, happened with the South Korean, but because the South had military drills with North Korea, with the United States, Madam Chair. We believe, ladies and gentlemen, that after the Yongbyon attacks and after, uh, after reprisals, not only from the international community, but also from China, when in WikiLeaks revelations it revealed that China stopped North Korea in giving aid when, North Korea, uh, when Kim Jong-il himself went to China to meet Wen Jiabao, it, it shows a trend that the international community is willing to not only put 
you know, put, put, put pressure on North Korea, but this time we have China, and there's a trend to show that China is willing to be on board to reprimand North Korea as well. We believe that sanctions is enough to ensure security of the South, uh, South Korean people, but giving and continuing the sunshine policy will bring more harms, and we're going to prove the harms. Madam Chair, two things up that I'm going to be talking about in this debate. First, we're going to talk with you about the harms of rewarding a belligerent nation of North Korea, which is uniquely evil. Not just evil, but evil in their own sense. Secondly, we're going to talk about what North Korea would do with the aid. And thirdly, we're going to talk about how we need to increase our policy of isolationism against North Korea and not allow any sense of you know, giving them a comfort zone whatsoever. But before that, a couple of rebuttals towards Tate's arguments. First, he told us that non-engagement is a failure. And he points to you that Yongbyo disaster is a reason uh, why non-engagement is a failure. And because of that, we need to continue with the sunshine policy. Ever since President Roh Mo Mohyun uh, reversed the sunshine policy from Kim Dae-jung, we didn't see any attacks for eight years, Madam Chair. We didn't see any form of, you know, any form of skirmishes by the North to the, to the South Korea and until the military drills were engaged. We feel, ladies and gentlemen, non-engagement will work because it shows that North Korea are willing to talk in the six-party talks and are willing to sit down and talk with, the, uh, with South Korea and its allies, ladies and gentlemen. We understand that non-engagement has, has, you know, has shown frictions from time to time, but we believe that it's the best policy we have to show North Korea that it shouldn't you know, be arrogant and display its military might. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, they told, they told us that you know, security is essential and we want to limit conventional attacks. That's fine, ladies and gentlemen, but you seem to forget that the, that the nuclear pro development program is still there. That they will, that, that, that one of the reasons why North Korea is developing and harnessing nuclear, uh, nuclear weapons is that it does intend to use it one day. And with an irrational leader like Kim Jong-il, God knows what he's going to do, he attacked Yongbyo, ladies and gentlemen, without giving a prior warning, ladies and gentlemen, who knows what uh, the calculated decisions that he would make in unleashing a nuclear weapon, ladies and gentlemen, giving an aid would facilitate that. But thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, this concept of, you know, he told, they told us that one day, you know, saying that there's already a transition of power to Kim Jong Un, yes, there might be a rise, you know. Well, we, we think that's just mere assertions. We don't know yet how Kim Jong, uh, Jong Un would react. He might be worse than his father because, uh, you know, his father proved worse to be worse than his grandfather. We don't know, ladies and gentlemen, and we can neither confirm what will happen. Before that, Logan. So your logic is that this uniquely belligerent, desperate country that's getting more desperate and South Korea should just wait and let themselves be attacked? Or maybe they should <laughs> attack them? No, ladies and gentlemen, look, what we're saying is we need to increase pressure on North, Korea, on North Korea to ensure that they make concessions. And we're going to talk to you Why about them now. Sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, do we reward belligerent nation, uh, these belligerent natures uh, belligerent nations like North Korea? No. Because North Korea has a history of belligerency, ladies and gentlemen, even when the Sunshine Policy was in place. They kidnapped South Koreans and Japanese, yeah, yeah. they not only bombed Yongbyon Island, but even when the Sunshine Policy was in place, they continued with the nuclear program, ladies and gentlemen. And they also tested Taepodong missiles, to, uh, which shows that they wanted to transport the nuclear missile somewhere. What we believe, ladies and gentlemen, that with a history of belligerency and which which doesn't respect South Korean sovereignty, it shows that if you give aid such as the Sunshine Policy, what you would do is embolden North Korea to show that these people were right in attacking the Yongbyo, uh, in in attacking the people in Yongbyo Island. They would feel that they achieved a sense of moral victory. Five minutes only, right? They achieved a sense of moral victory with regards to how sit down. With regards to uh, just because they attacked Yong Yongbyo, South Korea would follow with aid. It shows that you're rewarding belligerent nation. And who knows, ladies and gentlemen, by increasing their belligerency, Why would that mean South Koreans would give more concessions to the North, ladies and gentlemen, which is something which we cannot face, such as a nuclear disaster, which we don't want, ladies and gentlemen. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, what has North Korea done in the past when aid was given, i.e. I, the last sunshine policy, ladies and gentlemen? What North, Korea, North Korea has a long history of filibustering, meaning that they receive aid, they temporarily shut down nuclear reactors, they temporarily halt yes. military yes. activities, yes. but when... But, but when but when the coast is clear, they open back the nuclear reactors, ladies and gentlemen. They open back hostilities against the South. This happened before. When Clinton gave aid to the North Koreans in 1998, they shut they temporarily shut down the Yongbyon reactors. But in 2000, when Bush was in power, they opened it back, Madam Chair. They use aid as a buffer, as a time, as a carrot, carrot and stick approach to gain more time. But what's more worse, Madam Speaker, is that they use the aid for their own military men while people are still starving, Asian yeah, yeah. You're empowering the military further because with that humanitarian aid, 
You, there's no accountability with the Sunshine Policy, Madam Chair. We cannot ensure any sense of degree of accountability with an irrational leader like Kim Jong Hill, which has absolute power to uh, to unleash amongst the South. Thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, why must we increase the policy of isolationism, and why must we not stick with them? Because if you allow it, it shows that South Korea is willing to be hunky dory, is willing to be a friend with the North Korean. That North Korean has somewhere to go to. That North Korea has. No, some semblance of it. We need to shut down all avenues towards North Korea to ensure that they do gain some concessions, be it security or be it you know shutting down the nuclear program. We believe, Madam Chair, that this has happened before with South uh, South Africa and its apartheid regime, where where it you know uh, negotiated power with Nelson Mandela. We believe that when North Korea has been left without friends, this is the opportunity to ensure that the North cease its attack on South Korea and give. Madam Speaker, like Kate say, I was a soldier, right? When I first entered the army, they just informed me and brainwashed me. North Korea is the enemy of the South Korea. I was brainwashed, but right after came from the army, I just read the newspaper and see the situation. Now I realize Sunshine Palace is working better than before. They just don't realize, they just said, we just see these approaches, we just see this situation, and there's no end problem. There's yeah, yeah. no solution from the these teams. Yeah, they just yeah. won't say these are the best situations, like first bombardment, the civilian like district, yeah. many Korean soldiers dying, that is the best solution they can bring in this debate. I think yeah, yeah. it is quite humiliating as South Korea. Yeah, yeah. He said I have an argument. I'm going to talk about why the restart the sunshine policy bring the benefit to the South Korea. And before moving on to my first argument, I'm going to rebut some of the cases from the ocean team because there's a lot of problems, right? Mm -hmm. He said No Myung is the person who just stopped the sunshine policy. No, No Myung is the most respected president. And Lee Myung Bak, who is the stop the sunshine policy. Yeah, yeah. And, and she said, yeah, he said, like, if we give more money, they just invest more and attack us more. No. The things the North Korea want from their attack was they just giving us the signals. My people is dying, my regime cannot be sustained, so you must take care of us. When they get what they want, they will stop. The history proved this, right? Yes, from no. Kim Dae-jung to No Myung, which was the sunshine policy, there was the smallest attack from the North Korea. There was little tensions, but, but there was no any civilian district yeah, attack yeah. at the first place. They must deal with these problems like Chanan policy and Yeonpyeong-do attack one, right? Yeah, they yeah. never ignore, they just ignore these things. And I think North Korea, without our sunshine policy, they can't attack South Korea without our money because yeah, they yeah. have a lot of strong army, right? Then they, like, yeah, okay, then they close South Korea because there was two big accidents, we must increase lengths of the like, soldiers who just stay in the army exactly. from the 20 months to 22 months. I think this is a very loss of the South Korea. Yeah, yeah. Then they talked about like North Korea have a like no North Korea have a nuclear weapons because they want to attack South Korea. No, that wasn't happening. They just have this because they want to get something from the South exactly. Korea and sunshine policy will satisfy them they will not using the like these nuclear weapons. Yes. So, NC, so how long will the sunshine policy continue? And are you telling me that you're going to continue living in the fear? Okay, I'm asking you a question. How long this kind of stupid attacking the North Korea continue in your policy? Yeah. We're like lessening the problems by giving them money. We will communicating yeah. and interacting with the North Korea. That is the whole point of a sunshine policy because we never see the solution of these problems, right? They never say us this is a problem. Yeah. Then they said Kim Jong-un is not different. They just ignore like paid analysis, right? 
He studied in Switzerland. He's different with Kim Jong-un, right? Kim Jong-il. He just stay in the politics about a year. He doesn't have any legacy. When the Kim Jong-il just start his like president in the North Korea, he just stay there more than 20 years. He has a lot of legacy. They have a power grip inside of their government. Kim Jong-un is different. He must appeal to their citizens, right? They must feed their citizens and getting more power inside of the government. That is different. North Korea will continue to communicate with us. They show us North Korea stuff and they want to set up the meeting at the first place from the North Korea. Okay. Moving on to my first argument, benefit to the South Korea. First, why South Korean accepting now? I said there's a two like, really like, biggest accident, right? First bombardment to the civilian district. Yeah, this yeah. makes people like disappointed this government. They fear non-engagement policy is fair. So these guys want more from the government. That is why Lee Myung Bak's like border, like the popularity rate is solely decreased because they just doubt about the policy against North Korea because it is a big issue, right? And like, okay. So before that. No, no, no. And like people feel like, people knows like because South and North Korea, at the first moment, they just start want set up the meeting with South Korea. Yeah, yeah. Always South Korea start the meeting, right? But this time is different. That makes yeah. feel people this is time is different time. They willing to take this as a new approaches. Yeah. And what is the practical benefit to the South Korea? First, we can meet separate family, right? Because of Lee Myung Bak just stop sunshine policy, there was no engagement. There was no interactions. Family who was separated because of a Korean yeah. war, they couldn't meet about four years. I think this is non-comparable with the cost. Yes. Second, we must buy more weapons, right? Because there was big accident. South Korea just increased the secret national budget more than anything. We just cut every like meal to the student and free lunch thing to the student. We just cut everything, yeah, yeah. but we just increased national secret budget. I think this is a big loss to the Take South one. Korea. Right? Third, we can get a lot of benefit from the industrial area, right? The tech clearly said, there is a Gaelong industrial area, there's a Gimdang Mountain Trust area. We can get the benefit because Lee Myung Bak just start non-engagement policy. Like most of the like workers in that area just kicked out because North Koreans don't want to do business with South Korea. I think this is a big loss and benefit. First, like, like we just, we cannot like compare the cost of the soldiers time and civilians time. We yeah. see these kind of accidents can happen more and again and again and again. I think this is a big loss to the South Korea. And now I'm going to talk about Chinese influence, right? Let's look at the country who is engaged with North Korea. Yeah, yeah. US don't, Japan don't, and South Korea don't because they believe this best policy. And only China, like, has engaged with North Korea. Why this is a problem, Madam Speaker? Like I said, there's the Gumdang Mountain and Gedong Industrial Area, which is initially invested by South Korea, which was taken by Chinese government. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a big blow to South Korea, right? I need some kind of benefit, South Korea, with that, because we initially invest a lot. Not anyway, on top of that, we just lose interaction between North Korean people and South Korean people. Yeah. Tate mentioned, when you are like industry, feed your family. When South Korean company and president make your living better than before, those kind of interactions we cannot ignore at the first place because that is the thing we can change concept of the North Korean people. They just ignore those kind of call, uh, those kind of benefits. Okay, Madam Speaker, I don't believe they can solve the problems. We will see more civilian that more soldiers that situation is going to be worse. But we believe Sunshine Policy stop this kind of worst accident and killing. For those reasons, I'm very proud to propose this motion. Yeah, yeah. Alright, thank you very much, Mr. NC. Let's call the yellow line. Yeah. Madam Chair, first let's review this continuing notion of isolation versus engagement and then move on 
to my second uh, rebuttal, which is benefits to South Korea that the second speaker brought up, which also happens to be a rehash of what Tate said exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I'll move on to my substantives yeah, on how yeah. this proposal grants legitimacy to the authoritarian governance of North Korea in the eyes of his own people, Madam Chair. And I'll analyze the relationship that King Jong-il has with his own people and also the psyche of North Koreans, Madam Chair. So first, let's look at this idea of isolation versus engagement. It's only substantive and the main <laughs> crux of the second speaker's speech, Madam Chair. Now, they didn't actually prove to us how engagement would work. This is what they did. They merely made comparisons. They said these North Koreans were belligerent, Madam Chair, and because that belligerency happened during the period of isolation, therefore, it's purely the fault of the isolation, Madam Chair, and because of that, no matter what happens, engagement will always be better, Madam Chair. Now, we say just because North Korea was sanctioned or isolated, Madam Chair, doesn't give them a right to act out or a right to be belligerent, Madam Chair, and it's not our place to reward them for it, Madam Chair, with only the hopes that they'll stop, Madam Chair, because this is what they said. I already told you, effects-wise, there are no guaranteed results, Madam Chair. But let's look at it even principally, Madam Chair. Chair. Even if, why should South Korea be held liable to being the bigger man, Madam Chair, igniting a policy with no guaranteed results when North Korea is, in, is the one that is infested with ill-advised actions? This is your people who are dying, Madam Chair, but let's not go in self-defense mode as, as to what ha- is happening under status quo, but let's give them money, Madam Chair, hopefully they won't act belligerently anymore, Madam Chair. This is a government that gave us a policy for us to enact without giving us a political will in the su- part of the South yeah. Koreas to uh, South Korea such also didn't give political will to South or North Koreans to actually accept the sunshine policy, Madam Chair. We could just as very well assert that they want the unconditional aid, but let's not let the families meet anymore, Madam Chair. Yeah, because yeah. this is their assertions. When, no- when North Koreans get what they want, then suddenly they'll stop doing all these military attacks, Madam Chair. Well, you can say the same thing with terrorists, but we won't give them what they want, Madam Chair. Because we believe what's the, the most prevalent part of the sunshine policy is the unconditional aid. If you would like to say when these people get what they want, which is the money, then suddenly they stop, Madam Chair. To that, we have three responses. Number one, Madam Chair, let's look at the precedence of six party talks. North Koreans want to take the money, Madam Chair, but they are unwilling to make the concessions. And here's a party who's very willing to give them the, this money unconditionally with the hope that they'll do what they want, Madam Chair. No guarantee whatsoever. But secondly, Ari already told you how North Korea is susceptible to making convenient concessions, Madam Chair, telling Washington that yes, we'll shut down our nuclear power plants. But two years later, when it's convenient for them to go back on those promises, then they did. These are the kinds of precedences that we have with no forms of guarantee, Madam Chair. And thirdly, we asked them, how long will the sunshine policy continue? Because that is inside the house that doesn't want to promise us results. We don't believe it is in the best interest of South Korea to continue on this policy, but rather to continue on status quo. Because what is happening on the status quo right now? They're having conferences in Washington, D.C., Madam Chair, with Japan and with the United Nations and with the United States of America to call for a united front against North Korea, Madam Chair. And they're actually having military practices within the borders of North Korea, Madam Chair. So on the second level, what am I going to tell you is that why sanction will work and why isolation will work this time but not previously. Because what is the main key in sanctions not working previously, Madam Chair? There wasn't any form of non-sustenance on the side of North Korea because they always had China backing them up. There's always profit, there's always trade relations, there's always a very large diplomatic actor backing up their choices. But with many evidences, such as the WikiLeaks revelation, Madam Chair, that China is very much uncomfortable with the position that the North Koreans are putting them in, Madam Chair, with the kind of empowerment which I'll speak to you later that the people of North Koreans are actually having right now with the kind of dissent of the international community and now we believe if China will continue with the uh, ascent of the international community and continue on this track, Madam Chair, we're giving them better and more effective international pressure to actually stop their attacks. So secondly, what did they talk about? They talked about the benefits to South Korea. The rehash of what he said, Madam Chair. He told you, well, let's meet separated families, let's have better economies, Madam Chair. Well, those are lovely benefits, but he never weighed out to you the greater harms of this policy. What about North Korea breaching the sovereignty of South Korea, Madam Chair? The lack of concern for the lives of South Koreans by those military attacks, Madam Chair. Those we're supposed to ignore because now families can now weigh up. Those are assertions because you think North Korea will actually concede to the qualifiers that you put upon them with the sunshine policy because you very so want them to receive this money. They very well just set a condition that I don't want these families to meet. I don't want you to inseminate officials within my governance but give me the money. Maybe I'll stop, Madam Chair. We don't believe that is the way to go. So before I move on to 
my substantives, yes. It's cute that you push onuses and ask us questions. But I have a question for you. Isn't China's ability to influence North Korea contingent on its ability to engage with them? Why would the case be any different for South Korea? <laughs> So China, the thing is, let's see if this may manage here. North Korea is contingent with the support from China because that's the only sustenance. But South Korea has never been giving them sustenance. They don't need South Korea anymore. But now with China backing out, but South Korea jumping in on the bandwagon, then also they don't have any need, Madam Chair, because they have sustenance. What we need is for both South Korea and China to stay out of the bandwagon, Madam Chair, and not engage with the side of North Korea. So let's look at why this would grant legitimacy to the authoritarian governance of North Korea. Now we believe foreign media, Madam Chair, has no access to report the discontent and anger of the people because North Korea claps down uh, on those avenues in their effort to attain control, Madam Chair. But, so, but we know enough, Madam Chair, we know enough that the people are suffering, we can deduce it logically, and when the disheartened people are suffering enough, and it seems true, Madam Chair, even North Korea cannot stop the media, as the riots showed two years ago, Madam Chair, when North Korea re-evaluated their currency, Madam Chair, when it harmed the bread and butter issues of the people, the Korean people did backlash. We believe what does it show to you, Madam Chair, is that the governors of North Korea are already losing the hearts and the minds of the people. And what the people need right now, Madam Chair, is no further discouragement from these external actors. What do we mean by this, Madam Chair? Because when the government is being rewarded by the international community, Madam Chair, you grant legitimacy to the North Korean government <laughs> by sending a message to its people that your government is actually doing something right. You're creating a situation that reveals a lack of will of the people and you disempower them, Madam Chair, that, that confines them to the progress in the right direction, which is one step closer to actually being empowered and doing something against the government, Madam Chair. Because what's worse, when North Korea is given this aid, what is likely to be used for Number one, they probably redirect it to the military in order to co contain better control of its own people. Or secondly, when they actually use the aid to feed its people, Madam Chair, these are the people who will be brainwashed that my government is actually doing something right, Madam Chair. In subsequent of that, there will be no urgency left, Madam Chair, in the minds of this, uh, in the dire situation that requires action. In a context where tension and urgency, Madam Chair, of the situation may last, uh, may well be the very last straw uh, at the hay, Madam Chair, that requires action to be done by its own people. This kind of policy disempowers the people and encourages the governors of North Korea to continue on its belligerent actions to South Korea and to its own people, Madam Chair. And with that, we are very proud to oppose. It's easy, ladies and gentlemen, to play chicken when it's not your life that you're playing chicken with. Right? I, it's amazing how on one hand they can say, these guys are pure evil, they're unpredictable, they're belligerent. So what we should do is put them under more pressure and see what they would do. They're irrational. We're not sure how they're going to believe, what, how they're going to behave. But yet we don't want to rationally encourage this bad behavior. But wait a minute, they're irrational. So we'll keep putting them under this microscope. It's easy for us to do that because we're six hours away, not living under the fear of nuclear annihilation. Right? But for the people like him who have to serve, to the 48 people who died on a ship, right? these were not hardened soldiers. These were people doing their two-year military service between the ages of 20 and 23, and they died because we put a, a belligerent, unpredictable leader, like you said, under so much pressure that they reacted. The tough part is, the tough part is this, that we don't know what else we can do. What can South Korea do? South Korea cannot attack them back. The worst, the most extreme thing they can do is have war games. War games. How pussy is that, right? That's the only thing that they can do. And even that, they say, oh, it's too much. It's South Korea's fault for, uh, for antagonizing them by playing games with ships on their coast. But that's all they can do. We think South Korea should be the bigger man because they can and because they have no other option. And I'm going to talk about that at this point. I'm going to do look into isolation versus engagement and compare the two perspectives that they've given us. Because they haven't given us a way out, but it's cute Well, they ask us how long is your policy going to last without telling us how long their policy is going to last. And then I'm going to look at this notion of the benefits of South Korea and this, this lie that NC didn't give you any constructive material. Let's look at this notion of isolation versus engagement. 
They're not pro proposing anything new. They are proposing status quo, maintaining the current sanctions that exist. There's no additional pressure. The only thing that they're relying on are three things. One, that the context has changed. And this only came mm -hmm. out in the second speaker's speech. Yeah, right? yeah, the context right. now has changed because there's this WikiLeaks article. Wow, that China is suddenly <laughs> changing and therefore we should grant all, all these things. And secondly, that you know, the, the changes in North Korea, that this uprising, well, Eric did allude to this a little bit when we talked about uh, South Africa. And thirdly, how continuously dealing with them will embolden them and make them really, really bad people. Firstly, and Tate, I think Tate dealt with the China point. He said the reason why China is engaging with them now, because China provides them sustenance. If you say China is not providing them sustenance, Sir. and South Korea is providing them sustenance, then by your logic, shouldn't they be dealing with, with, with China? I'll give you a chance. So the reason why they listen, China actually has a form of influence onto North Korea is because they set condition every time they give it. That's not the case with your sunshine policy, but you're giving it unilaterally and unconditionally. If that is so, then why, why are they sort of letting go of North Korea now? If North Korea is acting within the... No, you just said this, right? Like, according to the WikiLeaks article, China's pissed off not with North Korea because North Korea is not following their things. They didn't know about this Chonan disaster. They didn't come out in defense of North Korea. They didn't uh, control the, 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 the North Korean bombing of Yangpyeong. They're losing control of North Korea, which is why they're giving them up. So they're also not following that situation, right? You can't have it both ways, guys. You can't say China is controlling them, but China's not controlling them. If China's losing them, then we think it's a prime, it's a prime, sit down, it's a prime situation for North Korea, for South Korea to step in and take, the, and, and take control. Secondly, they said, look, the changes in North Korea, the people uprising, like it would be just like South Africa. South Africa was an open community. There were political parties and groups. An uprising in North Korea means someone not bowing in front of Kim Il-sung low enough, right? That, that's the problem of what's happening. We don't know the situation. They will deal with, with brutal force. Again, you cannot say, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say these people are so evil, but now that they will bow to, to these changes. What we said is, the only hope that you can camp, that you can get to that is hope that the military regime that is there will be willing to concede. The military regime care about their own sustenance. They want to control their lives and, and keep living the, the life of, of luxury. Yeah. They don't really care about all the, those big changes that are happening. Like if they feel that they are losing their bread and butter, if they feel that the direction is changing, they will be willing to change, with, follow the winds that are, that are currently changing. And if the winds are leading towards the direction of more engagement with South Korea, if those changes are, 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 are moving that direction, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we say we should do that and, and leave you know, yeah, in, that, yeah. in that direction, right? So the, the notion of isolation is kind of false. It's far more hopeful than our notion of engagement. And I'll tell you why our notion of engagement is not hopeful. Firstly, they said, look, nothing happened under our, our uh, under the sunshine policy which is patently false yeah. we've told you how the pol the goal of the sunshine policy was containment there was far more containment under the sunshine policy than here far more lives were lost in nc speech she talked about the practical benefits that people went through it's no mean feat to say that we two countries that are technically at war yeah, agreed yeah. to invest in a joint development cooperation mm -hmm. meaning that they trusted each other meaning that north koreans were willing to hire or be hired by south koreans meaning they, if they they agreed to direct interaction, Mr. Speaker, Madam yeah, Speaker, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. They spoke to each other. This is a, a situation where you don't send letters, there are no phone calls. We think that's a huge movement yeah, yeah, towards yeah. greater interaction. This was a situation where a ship was not bombed. They said there were no concessions. We think those were huge concessions. Yeah, All yeah. concessions that were lost, that given us no indication, not even an iota of how we can get those concessions back on yeah. any level. Secondly, they said there's no political will. And she spoke at great length how the tide has changed in South Korea. Yeah. How for the first time ever, there's been a civilian attack, right? Which makes people people are, uh, are desperate and they're willing to give up and move away from Lee Myung-bak and his crazy policies. Yeah, yeah. He also said for the first time that the North Korea asked for a talk. That for the first time in the entire in the 50 year history of this war, they stood up and they said, we want to talk. We think it's a huge sign. We think the message that they are sending them, if they ignore this movement by North Korea, is that they've given up hope. Is that North Korea has nothing to lose by continuing to attack them, ladies and gentlemen. So in this perspective of isolation versus engagement, they're not bringing anything new to the table. They're hoping that things will change by putting more pressure on them. At the same time saying that these people are so irrational that we cannot get anything out of them. Yeah. We don't think they're irrational. 
We think that if they're losing Chinese support, then we should step in. We think if their changes are happening, we think if the, the face that we want Kim Jong-un to see is one of reconciliation and engagement in South Korea rather than one of belligerence. Yeah, the yeah. benefits to South Korea. NC spoke about this at great length, which wasn't uh, addressed at any level. He talked about how the expansion, the money they need to spend on that, uh, uh, they're spending far more on military expenditure, which in the long run creates a far more belligerent approach towards North Korea and a militarization of the Northeast, of Northeast Asia and the region in general, which increases militarization of China and everything else in, in that region. Yeah. He spoke about how we're losing the investments that South Korea has already put into North Korea at the Kaesan complex, at the Dunga Mountains, and so on, and to, to Chinese investment, right? All those things South Korea will lose. And that's the reason why. That's the, that's the second reason why South Korea should do this. They should, do, they should be the bigger man because they can be the bigger man. North Korea can't at this point. They should be the bigger man because they have so much more to lose by not being a bigger man. And they should be the bigger man because they really don't have any options. Yeah, yeah. Madam Chair, we do want security for South, the South Koreans, don't get us wrong. But we have a problem with their policy. Because firstly, they, we, we believe that, Madam Chair, they haven't truly proven to us that firstly, status quo is not working. Because we think, Madam Chair, status quo is not failing, it just takes a lot of time. And we think that they failed to prove to us that status quo is what's causing all the trouble right now. Secondly, Madam Chair, we feel that they failed to prove to us why a unilateral, unconditional aid is the way to go. If you want to give them aid, fine, go ahead. But why must you do it unconditionally, noting the fact that you're dealing with a belligerent nation that's used to biting their hands that feed them, Madam Chair? Something that we feel they, they fail to prove. Now, I'll be looking at three issues to this debate. Firstly, on the idea of security and what is really in the best interest of security for the South Korean. Secondly, let's look at this, or, or what, um, let's look at the main stakeholder, Madam Chair, this South Korean, really is this in their best interest? And lastly, which proposal is better? Let's look at this whole idea of security, Madam Chair. Firstly, let's, well, the assumption coming from that side, which is glaring from the very beginning, was this. North Korea, during the Sunshine Policy, everything was happy, so we assumed that the Sunshine, sunshine Policy was working. So that's rather naive, Madam Chair. Oh, yeah. There are other variables that may came in factor that may be the reason why North Korea didn't strike that. Oh, yes, we can also say, Madam Chair, if you want to assume that there was, firstly, we said that uh, maybe, maybe you know, the government that was less desperate, Madam Chair, maybe the government had other factors to, not, to contain themselves and to not attack. But also, Madam Chair, there, we said that there's also a reason why the Sunshine Policy was repealed. If, if it was working so fine, then why did the South Korean decide to get away, to do away with it, Madam Chair? Because they, they realized that the Sunshine Policy is unsustainable and it's not doing them any good, Madam Chair. So we tell you, Madam, Eddie has told you from his speech that seven years after the sun Sunshine Policy was repealed, there was peace. So don't tell me that the Sunshine Policy was the main reason why North Korea was contained, Madam Chair. We say that's yeah, pure yeah. crap. Let's look at this. So, Madam Chair, we think that when you talk about security, firstly, there's a glaring assumption coming from that side. We think, Madam Chair, when you're dealing with the belligerent nation, the best way to go about it is to err on the side of caution. Yeah, yeah. It's, great, it's great if this unconditional unilateral aid works. But what if it doesn't, Madam Chair? South Korea has given everything, Madam Chair, self, uh, you know, selfish, uh, selfless lead, and all they get, uh, uh, all they get in return is a threat to their security, Madam Chair. We say it's best for you to err on the side of caution, and we think that it's good because South Korea has the backing of the entire international community, Madam Chair, as the force of them jumping ship and not and doing it on their own. We think that's that's far worse. Why, Madam? Because if you want to look at the trend in history, right, Madam Chair, we think uh, North Korea has many time and time again okay. bit the hands that fit them. We get a six party talks where the big players were willing to sit down and talk. They built on that, North Korea walked out yeah, and built yeah. on that party, yeah, Madam Chair, yeah. where people were willing to make concessions for them, even though they were broke in the first place and didn't deserve to be talked to, Madam Chair. And also when Clinton gave them aid, Madam Chair, they said, oh yeah, we'll shut down our nuclear program. But the moment Bush came in, they started it all over again, Madam Chair. North Korea has proven time and time again of not being worthy of this kind of, you know, Humanity, uh, this kind of uh, you know, uh, unilateral, unconditional aid, and we think that that's not the way to deal with them, Madam Chair, because all they give us is this false pretense of security where they start when they stop and they start again, Madam Chair, and they bully yeah. the international community yeah, yeah. into giving what they want. We said that's not the way to go about it. And this is the interesting thing that came out from Logan. He said, Look, the government will not change, so let's just hope that the military will change when they realize that their bread and butter is harmed. Exactly. When you give, when you go with the sunshine policy, you give them all aid. 
all kinds of aid, Madam Chair. The military will not feel yes, that they are yes. harming any way, Madam Chair. They will want to maintain their lifestyles. They will stay loyal to that regime. So we say in that case, Madam Chair, uh, Logan has contradicted his case and proved to us why China policy will not work. So we say, Madam Chair, when you're dealing with this kind of nation, we shouldn't embolden them and reward belligerent attitudes, Madam Chair, and tell them this is wrong, we're not we're not going to give in to you. Secondly, let's look at this idea of South Korea, Madam Chair, because they're telling us that South Korea should give this aid freely without telling us why it's in the best interest of them and why they have the political will to do it in the first place. Because you hear all these nice benefits coming from the guy in pink, right? He said this, look, your families will meet, so we also heard something about tourism. He said that's fine and dandy. But that's based on the assumption that North Korea will want to reciprocate. Yeah, yeah. Because firstly, you're not putting any conditions on that. It's not like you're saying, hey, we're going to help you this much, but you have to risk, you know, you have to cooperate, right? We don't hear that at all, Madam Chair. So it's based on the assumption and based on the hope that maybe North Korea would suddenly be nice. We said, no, Madam Chair, North Korea has a deep-rooted hatred towards the South, and giving them food or giving them aid will not change that attitude, Madam Chair. It'll just give them the moral victory because now it seems that South Korea is being bullied. Now it seems that, Madam Chair, South Korea is bu being bullied into gi into giving what North Korea wants, Madam Chair. Why is it that every time there's an attack onto their why is it that there's a, but every time there's an attack onto their territory, they will have to give up something without have, knowing that something they will get something in return, Madam Chair. So that's extremely detrimental, and we don't want South Korea to continuously give when they, they are under threat, Madam Chair. We think they should join the international community and put on pressure onto the North Korea because we said the in history now is good. When you see the whole international community is against North Korea and you're pushing them into a corner, making them more desperate. And we think yeah, yeah. long enough, we think that sooner or later you'll see them having to give concession, Madam Chair, because no nation can survive alone. So we say that we should we support this trend in status quo and not suddenly giving in and you know being you know and being bullied into giving what they want, Madam Chair. We saw but we also think, Madam Chair, that this will harm South, South Korea, because we don't think there's people, uh, the people in South Korea who actually support these kind of policies. Why would they give in something to people who harm them and who take away the, who've taken away the life of their families, Madam Chair? You saw this in the case of the attack on Long Pyong Island, where the, op and the op op opposition party, the Democratic Party, who was initially critical of Lee Myung for ending the Sunshine Policy, was pissed because Lee Myung wasn't hard enough on North Korea, Madam Chair, after the attack. This shows, Madam Chair, the people in South Korea themselves don't want, this kind of, don't want to be nice with North Korea anymore, because all they get in return are attacks and continuous attack, Madam Chair. We think that it's time for South Korea to uh, to go hardline on North Korea and to go hardline on North Korea and not uh, and not you know, start making concessions because we think it doesn't guarantee them anything. Uh, and we, th we think it's better to err uh, on the side of caution, Madam Chair. Let's look at the third idea, Madam Chair. What really is in the best interest of North Korea? We say yes, status quo is not perfect, Madam Chair, but their proposal is not guaranteeing anything either, Madam Chair. But it's making things worse. How? Because we heard this from my speech, Madam Chair, which, with no engagement whatsoever from Logan, surprisingly. We, we heard this. We, we believe that when, when you give the people aid, they, uh, when, when these people is under, you know, when, when you give the people aid, Madam Chair, when they've suffered long enough, they'll start to believe that, hey, maybe the government is doing something right. That's why suddenly we have food on our table, Madam Chair. You give them yes. this false sense of hope when they think that, uh, you know, Kim Jong-il has finally changed and has finally cared about them when it's not true, Madam Chair. We think that, that the most sensitive situation has given has made you know has made you know the has give, have made place for the best revolution, Madam Chair. Because when the people are desperate enough, when they realize that the King when King Jail is not doing anything for them, they'll encourage them to rise up against the government and put pressure on them and realize that King Jail is nothing but a selfish man, Madam Chair. We think that will encourage the North Korea to put internal pressure onto King Jail, Madam Chair, and maybe that will create sustainable change. We don't want this kind of policy where it doesn't guarantee anything, but requires the South Korea to be continuously bullied. <coughs> Alright, thank you very much. Next we've got Eric. Madam Chair, at the end of this debate, we have to look at the burdens that the government had, the problems and solutions, and also the arguments forwarded by both sides. Because when we look at what side our government came up with, they told us that you know North Korean is a belligerent state. No one wants to be friends with them, but in order to have a policy of containment and to ensure the security for civilians, we need to reintroduce the Sunshine Policy of giving unconditional aid unilaterally with no degree of accountability towards the North Korean Republic, or Democratic North Korean Republic. They told us, Madam Chair, from Tate, uh, 
uh, arguments that non-engagement is a failure and the reason why Yongbyon Island was attacked and Chonan, uh, the Chonan warship was sunken was because of the sanctions imposed by uh, South Korea and the rest of the world, except for China. We told you, Madam Chair, that North Korea, yes, we, uh, we told you that non-engagement is not a failure, considering with recent revelations, ladies and gentlemen, that China is willing to tell off and snub North Korea, as compared to the past where China has been tacitly or even expressly, in certain circumstances, supported North Korea, the dynamics and the psyche which, with, with the relationship with China, North Korea, and China, South Korea, and North Korea has changed whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. And these are the things which we need to take as an opportunity to help to ensure North Korea you know, gives concessions in a few areas. They told us this debate is only about ensuring security for civilians. But no, we think that this debate is not only about security for civilians, but also other pertinent issues which the North Korean has. Be it nuclear weapons, ladies and gentlemen, be it um, you know, kidnapping South Koreans and Japanese, ladies and gentlemen, and be it other belligerent stuff that it has done, to the, done in the past and has to be accounted to, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to reward a nation which has, which with uniquely evil traits, which continues to purge its, uh, purge its population and leave them in famine and attack unprovoked legitimate and their only response was because they had a military drill. This is a type of irrational leaders that we are dealing with and you know, with no policy of containment or uh, no, uh, no policy of containment upon them whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen, with and them having nuclear weapons whatsoever, uh, we believe that this is going to be a flaw, Madam Chair. We heard a lack of response coming from the side, open, uh, side government when we told you how it's convenient for North Korea to give up when they can and then re-enter into negotiations whenever they can, when it's convenient for them. No responses whatsoever. And this is exactly what they did during the Sunshine Policy, we've told you, in Clint, uh, during the Clinton administration. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, is with the substantives coming from my second speaker. How she told you that the, the form of legitimacy that you are conferring towards the North Korean people will, will embolden the military further. Because when you put aid or you put food on the table, ladies and gentlemen, these are the stuff which enhances the prestige of Kim Jong Il, uh, Madam Chair, we told you, ladies and gentlemen, that there has, there, there is a, they have uh, rioted before. When we talked to you about the currency re revaluation, which happened two years ago, no responses whatsoever coming from them side. They give you minimal or marginal benefits. You know, like how we're going to have this Kaesong Industries joint reinvestment. You know, we're going to have money pouring in. We're going to have families reunited. For you know, temporarily united, uh, reunited. But that's not the issue, Madam Chair. Yes, we would love to have all that, ladies and gentlemen. But there's bigger pressing matters at hand. Nuclear power plants uh, needs to be shut down. Concessions needs to be garnered. And this is the opportune moment to ensure that this can happen, ladies and gentlemen. China is already in the bandwagon. When are you? We believe, ladies and gentlemen, that non-engagement is not a failure. It will happen, ladies and gentlemen, with the cooperation of nations in the world, and we believe that North Korea, uh, that South Korea, and the rest of the world should continue with a policy of isolationism against a belligerent nation. I'll admit, Mr. Speaker, it's a little frustrating debating with a team like this. Fundamentally because when you come out and you early on say, there's a reasonable approach here, we don't admit things are going to get perfect. We said it's about a question of less worse. It's a question of containment. Yeah. What did they come out and do? They repeatedly pushed questions and onuses upon us, while never really answering the questions themselves. At the end of this debate, if you look at your notes, when have they shown you at any point in time, right, empirically with examples, we've seen success. Because all they've done is, we hope, they've leached our examples, the context we provided, and tried to show a different outcome is possible. And they proceed to ignore all the material in NC speech about South Korea also having a stake in it. Just dismissing it and saying security is all that matters. We conceded this early on. We also conceded early on that we know that South Korea doesn't keep its promises. But it's not a luxury you have when guarding the lives of the civilians to treat someone like a child and educate them on your behavior. This is a